Okay, ladies and gentlemen, karibuni sana. On this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you how to lay out your web pages using CSS. And before I begin this particular lesson, I want to mention uh, something that is interesting and very important to any designer. These are the four principles that were uh, that were actually suggested by a guy called Robin Williams. So he suggested four design uh, principles. And um, I just thought it would be important I mention them at this point so that you can be able to uh, know them. So one of the first one is alignment, is alignment. Now, alignment is uh, ensuring that every content alignment is ensuring that uh, really uh, every content in your web page is aligned to other contents within the same web page. So that is alignment. Uh, so that is alignment. And really, alignment is done using page layouts, what we're going to look at today. The other one really is contrast. That when you're doing design, the important stuff should be very clear it should contrast like you can see here the title of the course uh, uh, has been made to be bolder so that is one way in which you can make something to contrast make it bolder make it a different color make it bigger in size so that is really what we call contrast then number three we also have repetition repetition now repetition really is ensuring that you use the same style across your website. Uh, so what, what that means, for example, is like for heading ones, you format them the same. Uh, for heading twos, you format them the same in terms of the font size, the font colors, etc. across all your web pages in your website. So that is what we call repetition. Uh, including also, for example, your layout, your menu, they should be very different. They should be the same across your website. And number four uh, is, uh, what is this last one? We have alignment, we have contrast, we have repetition. Mm. I'm trying to remember what is it. Just repetition. Okay, I'm just forgetting. Uh, give me a minute. Just give me a minute. I Google. Uh, I'm just forgetting the last one there. Ah, uh, the last one is proximity, 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 proximity. So proximity is about placing related content together. Pre, uh, placing related content together. So these four design principles are, are very important in web design. Uh, maybe when Robin was coming up with these uh, principles, maybe he was teaching uh, just the general graphic designs. But these concepts also apply when it comes to uh, web design and therefore in this particular topic number eight we're going to be learning on how you can lay out your on how you can lay out your web page using CSS and layout will enable you to achieve uh, especially alignment it will also allow you for example to control things like proximity and also repetition and you can also use actually layout to contrast uh, one type of content from another. So it is very important that you, you first of all understand that. Okay, so in this topic, we're going to learn how to use the CSS float property to create a fixed width design. We're also going to learn how to do positioning. So we have what we call position properties that are used to lay out a page. Then we're also going to learn how to create a fluid uh, page design so we have fixed width and we have fluid uh, so fixed the width is fixed cannot change fluid means exactly that 
uh, that uh, uh, the width of the site can be able to change uh, depending on the resolution of your screen. And then we also we're also going to learn how to use CSS to style navigation lists. That is especially the top menu, and we're going to look at some HTML5 uh, semantic elements or new elements that were introduced uh, in HTML5 uh, to be able to be used for doing layout. We're also going to look at a very interesting concept, which is the concept of using CSS Flexbox. And lastly, we're going to have a look at page layout and mobile devices. So let's begin. Uh, so by default, by default, web page content flows as a single column as a single column uh, what that means is that each block each block will flow uh, uh, and begin uh, on a new line uh, on a new line so you have a heading you have a list you have a paragraph all of them are on one column like that so your heading for example uh, let me just undo that so your heading for example is appearing here uh, then next you have a paragraph for example uh, like that like that so just one column one column so by default that is how web pages are laid out now most websites as you must have seen when you visited them uh, implement more complex page layouts that is uh, page contents are arranged into multiple columns you also have most of the time uh, a header a header and a footer section so how can we then be able to do this now this is just an example of a typical page layout as you can see here on the very top we have the header at the very bottom we have the footer then we have uh, three columns in the middle for a navigation bar for the page content here and for some additional links uh, here so you can see that this particular one has been laid out like that so how then can we use CSS uh, to achieve this so normally we use the CSS uh, float and clear properties uh, to do page layouts we also use positioning positioning properties uh, to be able to do this and uh, recently we are also using the new technology which is called CSS Flexbox which is really a replacement of uh, uh, the float and positioning properties and it's more neat and more and easier actually to use to lay out your page uh, so that is the CSS Flexbox so there are many techniques for achieving similar layouts uh, really it is a combination of CSS properties that will control the layout of your page as we are going to see so let's look at the process how do you do the layout number one you need to begin by marking up you need to begin by marking up the page with HTML elements so by marking up the page with the HTML elements we mean uh, defining what is a heading what is a list what is a table what is a paragraph etc etc so that is what we call marking up so you, you, you just create content uh, one column one column content uh, uh, like what we did in the first lab just like that now after that you come and add some div elements so you enclose whatever you've marked up here you now enclose them inside div elements in order to describe different parts of that particular page uh, so now we are going to nest these whatever we marked up we're going to nest them inside div div elements now after that we're going to use the width and float properties to create a basic page layout now remember this div here we're going to give it an id and then in css uh, we are going to use the width 
and the float properties uh, to, uh, to really uh, uh, determine the size and the positioning of this particular div. Remember, a div is just a box. You remember we looked at the, 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 the CSS box properties. So a div will simply create a box. And now inside this box, for example, you'll have a heading one, you'll have a paragraph, you'll have an image, for example, etc., etc. Now, after doing that, you now need to add finishing CSS touches. So what that means is now you can be able to format, for example, the colors and the fonts of your headings, of your paragraphs, etc., etc. So really that is the process of uh, laying out your page. So you don't begin from the layout, but you begin by marking up your page with the different content that you want uh, in your page. So let's do this. Uh, uh, let's have this. So before defining page layout, mark up. Uh, of course, we've already said this, that before defining the layout, mark up the page content using the basic HTML. So you can see here, for example, we're just having a, a, a H1 with a content header. We're also having an ordered list with, uh, 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 with some links. So each list item uh, is, is a link because we also have the anchor element, as you can see here. And for example, we also have a H2. So how this is going to be laid out is just in one column. So that's how we begin. Okay. And then after that, we can decide, uh, we can decide how we want to lay out our page. And in order to do that, we have to enclose the different parts of our page using the div elements. And after using the div elements, we have to give this div elements an ID. The ID attribute, remember, must have a unique name in order to specifically define that particular div. Now, look here. We had looked at an example. We had looked at this particular example that you're seeing here. So here we have uh, we have uh, a div here that is spanning the entire width of the top of our web page. Now this particular div, we are giving it the ID value header. You can see there. Then we have another one here, and this one we are giving it an ID value nav underscore bar. Uh, similarly here. We have page contents, and for this div, we are calling it extra links. And for this div, we are calling it footer, the ID's footer. So once you've done this, now you can be able to go to CSS and determine that, for example, nav bar is going to cover, is going to cover, for example, uh, let's assume, for example, this is 25% of the width of the page. Uh, uh, 25 percent of the width for example and then you can decide that uh, this one is going to cover 50 percent and maybe this one is going to cover the remaining 25 percent uh, for the width for this one you can decide that this one is going to cover the a width of 100 percent and this one is going to cover a width of 100 percent like that mm. how to make this div not start from a new line how to make this div not to start from a new line but follow this one is something that you're going to learn about today and you do that by using the float property as you're going to see so uh, at the very beginning at the very beginning uh, we just want to specify the width for example for this one uh, the width is 90 uh, uh, 974 pixels for the navigation bar 160 this one uh, 6, uh, 54 pixels, this one 160, this one 974. So this is how it's going to appear when we just uh, do the width property uh, using the ID attributes of each one of them in CSS. So that's how it's going to be. Now remember this example really targets a minimum screen resolution of 1024, of 1024 pixels. Okay, so uh, 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 after that, you now have to use a very important property, CSS property, called the float property. Now, 
you, you you're gonna go to each of those uh, IDs and use the float property now in particular you're only going to use the float property on the nav bar the page content and the additional links so here we're doing float left so float left simply says do not begin if they space uh, on the previous line do not begin from a new line just float to the left occupy that space to the left uh, so similarly this one we are telling it to float to the left and this one to float to the left so that's why they are able to now uh, unlike in the previous uh, page or slide uh, they, they are now on the same row instead of each one of them on its own row and on the footer uh, which is uh, the div that follows the additional links we, we're using another property called the clear property so here they're saying clear left now the clear property is used to stop the floating so really when we say clear left we're simply saying uh, automatically or by default if uh, we have used float left on additional links then the footer here is also going to try and float so if we don't want it to float left then we use the clear property so the syntax for that is clear full colon left and then semicolon so that is what the clear property is used to do just uh, for clarification again the float property is used to make columns to wrap on to the same line and the clear property is used to do the opposite uh, to stop uh, really the column or the row from wrapping up uh, uh, to the to the to the previous uh, float okay now after that you might need to center your page you might need to center your page now um, by centering the page really you you, you can even look at um, my page here because my screen has a higher resolution uh, uh, my PowerPoint slide has not filled up the entire screen eh? so you can see that my entire screen let me just begin from here you can see that my entire screen for example is covering that space eh? like that but you can see that my slide is actually in the middle in the middle in the middle of my screen so that is what we call centering the page so I'm sure you've been to websites, for example, even WhatsApp web. If you're in WhatsApp web, you, you see that uh, uh, if, if, you're, if you're using a bigger screen, then the contents are centered. They're centered in the middle. So that is what we call centering. So how do you center? How do you center? Normally, uh, you do so by creating a div. Uh, for example, here we are giving it we are giving it an ID of whole page and the reason as to why we are giving it that name whole page is because this div is gonna hold everything that is within the body you can see opening body closing body we have the opening div for the whole page and the closing so it's gonna hold everything else now we are going to use CSS to ensure that for this div it occupies a certain uh, width uh, of our uh, of our of our, our web page and it is centered so how do we do that how do we do that this is how we do it this is how we do it so on CSS you create an ID using hashtag whole page then you do uh, the margin property so margin hyphen left and margin hyphen right so you just put the value auto auto so when you put the value auto it's gonna recalculate for itself uh, 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 the margin on uh, uh, the margin on the right this one and the margin on the left this one and it's gonna ensure that both of them are equal and therefore because you've specified that this div you have specified that this div should have a length should have a width sorry should have a width uh, okay what's happening uh, okay should have a width of 974 pixels 
So before, because you've specified that, then really uh, 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 it's going to just occupy. So this, this space here, this one, is what is 900 and 974 pixels. And therefore, this page is going to be centered. It's going to be centered. So that is how we center our web page using margin left, margin right, and giving it a value of auto. Now, uh, CSS has what we call positioning properties. The positioning properties are used to determine how a particular div will behave. Now, by default, by default, uh, elements in HTML are statically they are statically placed uh, by statically positioned uh, it means that it will follow one after another and be able to scroll up if the content of that particular web page is bigger than the screen so you are able to scroll and the contents are gonna move one after another so that is what we call static positioning otherwise uh, we have three other because there are four values for the position property the other one is called relative relative positioning then we have absolute positioning and lastly we have fixed positioning now for fixed positioning uh, the element is positioned at a particular point on your browser window on your browser window and not really the page so for example you want to position this logo this logo here you want to position it at this particular position on your website and you want it to always appear there always appear there whether people are scrolling and the contents are moving or not you just want this one to be statically placed there no static is not a very good uh, term to use here because we have static positioning but if you don't want this to move even when we are scrolling then you use the fixed positioning so it will always appear there at all times so that is what position fixed does okay now the other one that you need to understand is relative and absolute for relative the element can be moved the element can be moved but it remains in the document flow now look for absolute element can be moved by moved we mean when you scroll it moves it moves up or moves down with the rest of the page content but for absolute it is removed from the document flow it is removed from the document flow so in the next slide i'm going to tell you about i'm going to tell you about the document flow but in the meantime please remember that we have four css positioning properties or values we have static we have relative we have absolute and fixed okay uh, okay so the document flow just some background so that you understand what a document flow is so elements placed one after another by default that is they do not overlap they do not overlap. Now, elements which are taken out of the document flow. Remember we said in absolute positioning, the elements are taken out of the document flow. They do not occupy any space on the page. It means that they do not occupy any space on the page and can overlap other elements. Can therefore overlap other elements. Uh, so, let's see an example here. So here we have an example. Now, when we without doing this, without doing position absolute, uh, by default, this blue colored div will appear there and the red one will appear here. Mm, the red one there. Sorry. This one. So this one. We've given it an ID of element one. Now, when we when we do this, position absolute, then top 
top 50 pixels left 50 pixels so what is going to happen is that this div is no longer going to occupy space and therefore this red div is going to replace it so that is what is happening here so this one simply replaces it you can see that this one now is replacing it where it was here because it does not occupy space number two for the blue div we are simply saying we want it to be let me change the color to blue for example we want it to be uh, 50 pixels from the top you can see so this is 50 pixels we also want it to be 50 pixels from the left so that's how we are able to place this blue div on top of the red div number one it does not occupy space then now we use the top and the left and the left css properties now generally uh, we have uh, we have of course as you might have guessed we have uh, top we have left we have right we have uh, bottom so we have those properties that can be used whenever you are using position absolute or position relative or position fixed because when you're doing position fixed you want to fix you want to fix this logo here so you must say for example uh, bottom zero pixels so that it stays at the bottom any distance from the bottom is zero pixels then distance from the left maybe five pixels so that you cater for for this cut distance here something like that so you only use this uh, you only use these properties when you've positioned absolute or relative or fixed but not static so static positioning which is the default one does not respond any statically placed element does not respond to to this properties top bottom right and left so i hope that is clear okay so let's look at an example of uh, static or over fixed eh? over fixed with design eh? so we can use absolute positioning to arrange div elements on a page on a page so uh, you can see here for the header for the header we are using position absolute then we're saying distance from the top zero pixels distance are ah, from the left zero distance from the top zero pixels so that's why it will be able to be placed there now look at how we how we achieve this how do we achieve this okay for the first column here position absolute distance from the left zero pixels but distance from the top 200 pixels you'll also notice that for the header for the header we specified a height of 200 pixels so that's why we want the navigation bar here to 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 have a distance of 200 pixels from the top because that 200 pixels has been used by the header so i hope you get the mathematics okay for the next one for the next one here you can see we are saying left distance from the left 160 pixels uh, distance from the top will remain 200 equally this one then this one distance from the left 814 pixels so what happens is that your browser recalculates it recalculates when you say that this one is uh, the distance from the left should be 160 pixels it simply means that the navigation bar the width this width here will be 160 pixels this one the width will be 814 minus 160 then this one will occupy the remaining the remaining width so that is how we do that okay centering the page I think we have already uh, talked about how to center by using the margin by using the margin left and right and giving it to auto 
but what is important again about that in fixed web page design is that for this for this whole page you have to position it as relative why elements with absolute positioning are placed relative to their parent element yani uh, if if we've placed this at the center then any other element that comes within the whole page will be also placed at the center are you getting the point so elements with absolute positioning are placed relative to their parent element so only if the parent uh, has a position property will that actually happen so the element will now move with the whole page that means that when you scroll it's going to scroll and it's going to move to the center with the whole page okay now the opposite of fixed web page design is uh, the opposite of that is fluid 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 simply means that your whole page can be able to resize on different screen sizes can be able to resize uh, so the page resizes to fill the available space uh, in this particular example the middle column the middle column the header and the footer will resize you can see you can see that on a larger screen on a larger screen the page content is going to be very big on a smaller screen we reduce the page content but the navigation bar almost the same almost the same we haven't reduced it similarly for the header it's going to reduce it's going to reduce and the footer it's going to reduce so here we 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 are, we are only changing we are, we are only changing the size of uh, uh we're only changing the size of uh, uh this one the header the page content and the footer so nothing else so let's see how can we achieve this so this is how to do it this is the code to do it so in order to do that uh, for the header for example we want the background color to be gray we want it to have a height of 200 pixels mm -hmm. mm, then uh, the nav bar background color green for example we want it to float left remember you have to use float for those ones to float with 160 uh, page contents we're just specifying the background color so we are not specifying uh, the width are you seeing that but here we specify the width uh, similarly here background color we want it to be green we are floating it to the left because it's the extra links then we're also specifying the width and then here just the background color to light blue and we want to clear left so that the footer cannot float to the left so you can see that we've only specified the width on the navigation bar and the extra links uh, boxes if you can allow me to call them that so because we've not specified the width for the header the page contents and the footer uh, the browser is going to make them occupy the space that is available so for the footer 100 percent for the header 100 percent for the page content whatever space is going to be left after the nav bar has taken 160 pixels and the extra links has also taken 160 pixels so i hope you understand that and therefore the header and the page content and the footer they're going to resize but the nav bar and the extra links are going to remain with a width of 160 pixels so that is what we call fluid page design fluid page design okay now uh, uh, another important property is uh, the property that is called the overflow the overflow property the overflow property is used to clear the float not really uh, i don't like this explanation 
anyway uh, you see for example here um, on the page contents on the page contents they're saying that overflow and the value is hidden so when they when when this when this is the value uh, for the overflow property hidden it simply means that uh, it simply means that uh, uh, sorry if, if this is the page content eh? so if you put an image and that image is bigger is bigger like that it's bigger than the space for the page content then this part is going to be hidden so overflow hidden so it's simply going to show up to here Th this other part is not it's not going to show so i hope you get i hope you get what what that means uh, so that is overflow hidden now generally we have um, uh, we have other uh, we have other values that can go into the overflow uh, into the overflow uh, uh, attribute eh? okay so this is just an example from w3 schools so for example you can have overflow then the value is scroll Oh, let me just name this uh, overflow scroll so when you have overflow scroll then you you achieve this are you seeing that so anything that grows beyond anything that goes grows beyond is uh, a, is uh, a scroll by is actually revealed eh? so that is overflow scroll hidden is here so same paragraph you can see that we have the scroll paragraph here uh, uh, x2 this one x2 x2 overflow hidden so you can see that the width and the height 100 pixels so anytime it goes beyond that then anything else is just hidden uh, it has been hidden uh, because x2 we have this so you can see all this has been hidden all this all this statement has been hidden it's only showing up to here so that is what hidden is eh? so other than hidden you can also have a value of auto auto so this is auto the only difference between auto and scroll is that auto does not give the horizontal the horizontal scroll it only gives the vertical the vertical scroll mm. okay then uh, we have uh, visible overflow visible so you can see that for this uh, the last paragraph here or the last div here you can see that the background color is light blue eh? uh, width 100 pixels height 110 pixels rather eh? so anything that goes beyond that is gonna be visible but you can see clearly it has gone beyond because now uh, the background color just covers a hundred a height of 110 pixels so th the rest will show but not within that div it's like it's just gone outside you can clearly see that it's gone outside so those are the four uh, those are the four values that can go into the overflow into the overflow property so i hope you remember that okay oh uh something else i need to mention here the third column needs to be fixed to the edge of the browser so the extra links column eh so instead of floating it to the left we can just float it to the right so that it is fixed on the right hand side of of the browser now once we do that we might need to also rearrange our html uh, and how to do it is that the right hand column now will need to come before the middle column before the content so really you simply select the extra links you cut it and you paste it above this the page contents you paste it above it 
So when you do that, now the page contents come down, then uh, the extra links go up because you're floating it to the right. So the flow doesn't really matter, but the correct way to do it now is this way. If you're floating them all to the left, then it will be, uh, it will it will just flow uh, uh, like in this first example here. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think we are done in terms of looking at layout uh, using the float property. Now here we just want to do uh, to learn how to do lists. How do we not list? How do we do the navigation bars using list? Now normally we use the navigation bar. Uh, we use lists to create the top menu, especially and even the side menus. So you can see here we have a UL. We have a UL, uh, and we have list items that have anchor elements in them. So that is the first link. This is the second link, etc. etc. So we just want to see how to use CSS to change this list so that it can appear, for example, as a top menu. Now to do that, to do that, for example, we just want to say that for any unordered list that appears inside the header, we want it to have a margin. We want it to have a margin of zero pixels, padding of zero pixels. Now, the most important thing here is we want the list style to be none. Now, list style none removes the bullet points. I know that list will have bullets, whether it's a square or uh, a circle for example uh, so those bullets so it's going to remove them so it's not going to have so that is what that property does okay and then we have this header li now list items list items are normally placed one after the other each on its new line but we want them to appear we want the the menu to appear on the top like this option one option two option three option four so to do that we need to collapse the list items that are under the header by using the float left so that each list item will now follow each other like that then we put a margin of zero pixels and a padding of zero pixels so we're gonna do this during the practicals in order for you to see this so when you do that then the list items are gonna wrap onto the same line okay then now we can style the links to style the links we now style the anchor element so here what, what we're just saying these are descendant selectors we're just saying uh if we have an anchor element inside the header and it's also inside an li then we want to display it as a block so yeah you can only be able to specify the width can only be able to specify the width if the display value is a block so we want each of the anchor elements to have a width of 150 pixels we want it to have a background color of pink a margin so this is what is going to separate option one from option two remember for the li we had put margins of zero eh? so we are putting those margins here uh, so margin five pixels margin right uh, margin to the right only uh, so the very first option one is gonna begin from here from here uh, option one then now a margin of five pixels then option two then another margin right of five pixels like that like that eh? then we want uh, 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 to text align center so we have 150 pixels so if 150 pixels for example oh, my computer is hanging a little bit if 150 pixels is that then we want the content to be aligned to the center so the content will will come at the center there something like that so that is what text align center does eh? uh, you could also instead of using background color it is possible for example that you use a background image eh?
Okay, so that is it about that. Uh, I want to ask for a, a three minutes break, uh, and then we will continue. Okay, so let's continue. Now, <clears throat> in HTML5, some new elements were introduced uh, uh, in order to be used to lay out the page uh, instead of using the divs. So instead of using the divs, they introduced the header element, the article element, the footer element, and the aside element, which kind of make more sense rather than using a div and using an id attribute to uh to define the div but you can use whichever you want so header for example is used to define the header of the document footer same article may be the content the main content area aside maybe the left side or the right side uh, as you saw in the previous layout that we looked at okay so I'm not going to mention that. I've, I've already mentioned that. So this is how, for example, you can use it. Eh? So you still have the div for the whole page, uh, which you're going to use to center the page. But now you can have the header. The header. Then you can have the section. The section. Then you can have footer. You can also have, for example, nav. Nav is an element that is used for example most of the time to enclose navigation bars eh? navigation bars okay okay so now we look into an alternative an alternative you think using the uh, positioning properties and the floating properties to lay out your page is challenging then you can use flex boxes so a flex box a flex box uh, provides an efficient way to lay out a line and distribute spaces among items in a container in a container so really you'll have a flex box container which you can alter you can alter the items that are in it in terms of the width the height and even the order in order to best fill the available spaces so a flex container can expand its items to fill available free spaces or it can shrink them to prevent an overflow so how do we use css flexbox it's really an interesting it's really an interesting way of doing it and quite easy i advise that you uh, you, you search on YouTube. Uh, we have 20, 10 minutes tutorials that you can use to understand better the concept of flex boxes. So, as we said, uh, you, you need to understand a few theoretical concepts about a flex box. Number one is that a flex box contains what you call a flex container. Now, inside the flex container, 
then you have what you call flex items flex items so you can see here the flex container is this box with a background color of uh, is this purple or something i don't know and then the items are these boxes these ones these ones with the background color of light blue or something so those are the items uh, uh. so the items are positioned inside the container so let's see for example how to do that eh? so for example we create a class called flex hyphen container now under the display property we are going to write flex then we are going to define the width and the height the width and the height of that particular box so that gives for example this mm, okay let me just show it so this is the width 400 pixels and this is the height 200 pixels here in this example we are also defining a background color of light gray so that's how we do that then for the flex items again we are creating a class dot flex hyphen item then um, we say that the background color is going to be pink as you can see yeah pink then the width and the height so that is the width and that is the height this one. then the margin is 10 pixels so you can see that distance distance here so this is 10 pixels 10 pixels and if there was another one down here it would be 10 pixels so here it is times 2 here it's times 2 10 pixels for this one on the right 10 pixels for this one on the left eh? so that's why the space here is bigger because it's 20 pixels in total okay um, in order to center the items in the container you can use the property justify hyphen content then you give it the value of center it can be center it can be i think left end or right end something like that please confirm that so that you understand the other values that can go under that property oh they're actually here uh, it can be flex start so if you do flex start then they, they'll begin on the right ah, on the left when you do flex end then they'll begin they'll be left aligned let me call that right aligned eh? flex end right aligned flex start left aligned center center aligned eh? so that's what you have there and that is it so this is just a very brief introduction about css flex boxes but i advise that you read more about this and probably in your web design project you use uh, flex boxes to uh, lay out your page instead of using the positioning property because they are way way easy in fact you don't have even to use the width and the height uh, it has its own uh, property a flex property that you can be able to define the width and the height of uh, each uh, box that you want to have okay so page layout and mobile devices uh, so column designs do not suit mobile devices for two main reasons uh, uh, the screen can be too wide so when you have multiple columns uh, you may force users to scroll horizontally yeah? so even for flexible designs they have limits at very low resolutions I imagine uh, those those phones that have uh, I think 512 and below pixels uh, those ones that you call feature phones uh, the kabambis you call them kabambis those ones so they have a very small screen so uh, even if you've defined uh, a, a flexible or a fluid web page design and some part of it is fixed it's still a problem now in order to handle uh, this particular uh, uh, problem we have a solution which is what we call the CSS3 media queries media queries so the media query generally generally is used to uh, check uh, uh, the type or the size of the screen and be able to apply different CSS rules uh, on that particular page depending on the size for example so 
a media query uh, consists of a media type and may contain one or more expression so uh, normally this is how it's done at media at media and then some media type the media type can be the screen size it can be print it can be uh, audio something like that I think I think we're gonna see that just in a moment so you can include alternate CSS section inside the media query so that if that rule uh, uh, which is the expression is met then uh, some CSS code is actually executed okay so these are actually the media types so we have all for the rules that you want to apply for all the media types otherwise we have print so for example if you've tried to print your email uh, when you right click and you click on print you see that the format changes it, 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 it doesn't just print whatever was on your it doesn't print whatever was exactly on your email it doesn't print the same format so you can specify a different format for when a person wants to print your web page eh? so things are going to be layered out differently when they uh, print eh? then we have screen screen is computer computer screens tablets smartphones etc so screen then maybe you can express uh, you can write an expression for example if they're less than 500 and uh, uh, 12 pixels then do this eh? then we have speech so sp speech is how do you want the screen readers to read out the page do you want it to have a female voice a male voice what is the speed of reading it uh, what is the tone etc etc so some useful expressions for example is minimum height for the screen minimum resolution orientation maximum width maximum height etc etc so also encourage you to read more about the media types and how to use them because they are very 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 important now just look here in this particular example we want to change the background color to light blue if the viewpoint is 480 pixels or wider otherwise if the viewpoint is less than 480 pixels we want the background color to be pink so how do we do that look here so or in CSS for the body we just say that normally we want the background color of our page to be pink otherwise we've also included a media query so this media query we're saying uh, at media then which type of media print speech or screen screen and now the expression minimum width is less than 480 pixels what do we want to do we want to say that the body should change the background color to light blue so that's that's how we do it that's how we do it so one of the major uh, uses especially of the media queries is to change is to change that uh, layout that we've just been using eh? so you see you have the header here then you have the footer here then for example you have an aside here you have the content here and you have another side here so normally what we do is that we say that if it's on a big screen appear like this but if you are on a small screen mean width is less than 450 pixels now if we had used the float left float left float left here we simply say uh, clear clear left clear left clear left so that this this one this this div this div and this div they now will no longer float to the left but on a small screen and i i know you've experienced this they're now going to follow each other so that you only have one column so it it the, the site changes on a small screen from a three column site to a one column site so that it can fit better on that small screen size eh? so that's one of the main uses of that now in your css you can actually define uh, you can actually define a css an external css 
uh, sheet for each for each of uh, for each of the media type. Eh? So for example here we have the main CSS uh, so style.css so media uh, media type you can put some media type for example and something like all or something but you also have another style sheet uh, uh, mobile.css and here you're saying for the media it's screen and maximum uh, device width uh, maximum device width is 450 pixels and I think you've even seen this for example with Facebook they have m.facebook.com or something so the layout of that is normally used for small screen sizes and they use a different CSS so the content is the same but the layout is totally different to cater for small screens so when you do this when it's on a big screen this this is gonna be used when it's on a smaller screen lesser than 480 then this CSS file is going to be loaded so that is how uh, we use the media uh, 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 the media uh, queries so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your attention please post any question you might want uh, you might have or any clarification you might uh, want to seek on the comment section and I'll be able to respond to it otherwise Asante Nisana uh, I hope you'll understand this concept even more when we do it during the practical. Thank you very much.